All right, just a quick video on how we go about some of the engineering we do here at Road to Garage Sport. We're not just your average sort of, you know, um, we're based at the Type Airport, but we're not just a, your typical service centre. We have a pretty pretty decent machine shop as well, which is uh, fantastic for doing a lot of experimental work and uh, making adjustments to planes and, and, and uh, certainly rebuilding engines and building engines where a lot of machining is required. And in this instance, what I've got here is... Um, I've got a mock-up piston that I created purely for my CAD CAM uh, machining in my milling machine. Now, what the objective here is, I've taken a, I've taken a, a standard piston, which is here, and these are the forged pistons I've been working on. And uh, I thought, right, the absolute pinnacle, the peer resistance, the forged piston, the molly rings, well, let's put the, the valve recesses in as well, just like the, the Gen 4 do or the later Gen 3 or the later Jabro engines, including the Gen 4. So the idea of the valve recession is so that you create an engine that's now longer an in, no longer an interference engine, but is a clearance engine. Now, why is that important to have the valve seats, the valve pockets there, the relief pockets? For this very reason. If you ever have a valve stuck open, or for whatever reason a valve stays open, generally sticking, you won't have an impact. If the valve sticks open on a piston like this, which is, a non, which is an interference piston, uh, being that the Jabiru is technically an interference engine, uh, you will have uh, a collision between the piston and the valve, and that can be, t that is always terrible. At the very minimum, you'll bend the valve and it'll never seat again. At the very worst, the valve will fail, and the next minute you know you've got a, a complete disaster on your hands with mechanical failure and bits and pieces flying everywhere. So solely the reason that you would have a valve relief pockets in your piston is for is to remove the interference nature of the engine and so that's what i'm looking to do here i'm looking to take what i think is already a good setup with these forged pistons but just go to the next level and let's get that that valve clearance in and the way i went about that was i created a model here as you can see it's just a mock-up piston i've got the pin bore but what i did is i used the pin bore as my reference because no matter what piston we use that is going to be that pin is going to what is what drives where the ultimately the um, you know the the height of the piston is going to go up the ball. So what I did was I took a standard Jabiru piston with its valve relief and I measured it very accurately in the machine to get a distance between the center of this piston pin ball and the deck of the standard Jabiru piston with its relief machined in. And it happens to be from the top of the pin to the top of that land there, 20 millimetres exactly. So it doesn't matter what piston I put in the machine, if I wanted to have valve relief, I'm going to emulate that 20 millimetres from that deck there down to the down to sorry the, the top of the pin. So I put a pin in the, when I set it up in the machine, I put a pin in here as a dummy, and I touched the tool on the top of that, then I took it up, touched the tool on the top of that, measured that difference, and then I emulated this in my CAD to create the CAM, computer-aided machining, and that's it here. So if we go over here, you can see I've got my, my strategy, which is just basically uh, the first bore, which is that one there, and then the second bore, which is that one there. And it's total, and it's in its total, we can run a stock simulation here. Oh, sorry, uh, just a simulation. And you can see it running there. You see the tool path. Speed it up a bit. And that's one bore, and that's the second bore. I'm using an 18 millimeter milling cutter. And then when you go over to the code, you can see the code here, um, here, and there's the code. So that's all the G code that gets pumped into the CNC machine, set the tools up, jig the, jig the part accurately, which we're gonna have a look in a minute, and then run your program. And then at result, we go from that, and we go to that. That is beautiful. So that deck height there, regardless of the different nature of the combustion or the uh, the crown or the, the dish, is that, that face there is in exactly the same position as what Jabiru do. So we've emulated it. The valve spacing is easy to work out. That is just the, the centre distance of the valves in the Jabiru. And I've got a millimetre clearance around the biggest valve, which is the the um, the inlet valve. The exhaust valve uh, is smaller, so it doesn't matter. So I've just made it same as Jabiru do. I've just made the release big enough to clear the inlet valve and the exhaust valve will be taken care of itself. Now that is the ultimate now. I can't do better. <laughs> so so that's uh, now a clip. See, before that, there's an opportunity for the valve to hit this piston if it sticks. This one has now got the required clearance. Well, I don't I don't have haven't I haven't actually done any, you know, verification, but it is exactly the same as what Jabiru do. 
So uh, we assume they've got it right. So it's now effectively the same setup as a Jabiru piston, except it's forged um, with, uh, with molly rings and no piston offset, no pin offset. So there's that. Now the way I went about it to get my, um, my valve angles is I used my uh, LCH drawing. So you can see the combustion chamber there. Um, and there's the entire drawing. So that drawing there is our LCH drawing. You can go ahead and copy it if you like. So you go with that. And then, um, so what I've done is I've, uh, you know, zoomed in on the reference here with our, with our angles here um, and got the valve inclination in relationship to the combustion chamber and the top of the piston. And so it was relatively easy for me to work out um, the angles that, uh, that work. Being that when we designed this jab, uh, LCH head, um, we effectively copied all the de details of the j standard Jabru head at the time and then just made our water jacket around it. But we, we respected all of the center distances of the, of the valves, the push rod tubes, um, you know, the O-rings in, in this area here for the push rods. Uh, literally all the details are the same, including the valve inclination. So that made it easy for me to, um, you know, to, to find out exactly where these valves want to sit like that, you see. Anyway, so let's pop out to the machine and take a look at what we're doing out there. All right, so uh, here at the milling machine, you can see the setup. Uh, what I've got here is the piston clamped onto a spigot here, or, or a, uh, sorry, centered onto a spigot, and that fixture uh, here, this, um, this fixture plate here, is setting the correct angle for the valve inclination. So the milling cutter is just going to come down vertically, hit the areas that you saw on the um, on my uh, on my CAD, and then mill out the uh, the two valve pockets with a with what we call a boring cycle, which is like a circular cycle, spiraling down. Um, and the shaft on the side here is basically against the stop here, and that's what I've used to carefully be able to repeat the squareness or the, the, the alignment of the, uh, the piston so that the, the, um, the piston pin is at right angles to the, to the um, x-axis of the machine. That can come now that that piston's been clamped down and it's spigoted on the center, on that centering spigot. This can now be removed. There's the G-code being entered into the machine that you saw before on the computer. The machine's been all set up, all the heights and references, so it, it's, uh, it knows where it is, and all the axes have been uh, uh, calibrated and referenced. So we can just run the, run the program now. And there you have it, job's done. All right, so all the pistons are now, the forged pistons are ready to go into the Gen 3 Jabiru, which is sitting right here. So that's, uh, all the old pistons will get tossed, because uh, they've got that, as I said in earlier videos, they've got that problematic slit there, which I'm just too, too nervous about. Um, seen too many skirt failures break off at that point. So they're out and the custom will jumped at the opportunity for us to put the forged pistons in. So forged pistons are going in. Now, as I said in the last uh, frame, the last thing we did was we machined in these valve seat pockets to give it a valve relief. So the engine's a non-interference engine or a clearance engine. And I set the whole setup up off this uh, old Gen 3 piston. So I actually touched on here and actually ran the program so you can see I've just taken a skim off that, so that's perfect. So I've emulated that exactly on these pistons here, the forge pistons. Um, and as I said earlier, the way I did that was I referenced off the pin to the deck height of that scallop. And so no matter what piston goes in the machine now, as long as you reference the pin, regardless of the crown variations or the combustion chamber variations of the dish, it's not gonna matter. As far as the valve clearance is concerned, it's gonna be 
respected. So the difference between the, the dish here and the dish here, which has got a little bit more radius there and this is a bit thinner there, but apparently all the volumes are the same. But the bottom line is the, the milling cutter emulated exactly where that valve will sit, like so. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the same on both, you see? Right, so one other thing before we wrap up on these pistons and we look to build this, put this engine back together, is because the Jabiru has got a piston offset where the forged pistons, they do not have an offset, they're in the dead center, I carefully measured that and confirmed that, that it means with the Jabiru, with the valve seat pockets here, those valve seat pockets must point downwards to match the, the valve inclination of the heads. You can't put them in that way. If you put them in that way, you effectively don't have the valve clearance, you've lost the advantage. So you've got to have them in with the, the valve seat pockets sort of biasing down towards the, the ground. Now B, with that being the case on the stock Jabiru, with there being a pin offset, they make a left and right piston, which adds more confusion. I mean, it's not you know, overly taxing, but it's, it does invite a mistake. You must put when you get a new set of Jabiru pistons, because of the pin offset and the fact that the, all the scallops point down, as I said, you have a left set of pistons and a right set of pistons. Well, we don't have that problem with the forge, do we? This piston can go on left and right because the pin's in the center. There is no bias. All you need to do is make sure you put the scallops to the bottom and you can put the piston anywhere you like. If you put the scallops to the bottom on the wrong side on, on the earlier engine with the offset pin, well, the, the offset's going to be in the wrong position. You'd probably get away with it because some people do build the engines with the pin up or down or left or right, whatever. But in theory and technically, the pin should always be in the same offset on every cylinder. And that being the case, you would need to have a left and right piston. If you put a left piston on the right hand side or right hand side on the left side, um, you would have, to, and you put, you have to put the valve sculpts at the bottom, but then the pin offset will be in the wrong spot. Anyway, enough uh, jibber-jabber, blibber-blabber, let's build this motor.